So yes, guys, as the title says, I'm talking about a very, very ridiculously cheap lens I bought from a charity shop. And hopefully we're going to find out if it's any use and is it worth keeping and using on my cameras. OK, so this lens wasn't the only thing I bought from charity shops that day. I also bought something else from a different charity shop. I bought some Sonic key rings. It was part of a pack. There were some sort of bags and some slap band things in there. So later in the day, I went to the RSPCA charity shop and I bought this 135mm f2.8 manual Helios lens. And why did I buy it? Well, A, it was ridiculously cheap, which I'll come to in a minute, and B, because it fits into what I'm going to need it for. This is what they call a prime lens. It's not a zoom lens, it's fixed millimetres, so it's 135 millimetre fixed. And I haven't got a lens that length in a fixed prime. I have got a lens, a Tamron 100 to 300, which is a big chunky thing, which is a zoom lens. And the zoom lens is never as good a quality image wise. They're not as sharp as the prime lenses. Now I have got prime lenses. I've actually got six prime lenses in total. I've got five that fit on the Pentax and one for the Sony. So the Sony is the 19 millimeter Sigma 2.8. Then I've got a Tamron 28 millimeter 2.8 which is for the Pentax, but it doesn't actually fit the Pentax cameras because it's only for the old ones, not for the newer ones. And then I've got four prime 50 mil lenses for the Pentax. So I've got a F2, a 1.8, a 1.7 and a 1.2. The F8 is the newer one. It's a digital lens, as is the lens for the Sony, the Sigma. The other lenses are all manual lenses. Now I can use the manual lenses, not the digital one, but I can use the manual lenses on the Sony as well. So this lens, the 135, can be used on both the Sony and the Pentax. It is an old lens, it's an M42 lens as they call it, and an M42 basically means it's got a thread. So this lens has a thread on it and it screws onto the camera. So the older cameras from the sort of 60s, early 70s, you'd screw this on and just use it as normal. The later cameras from the late 70s, Pentax started it realistically, late 70s onwards through the 80s all had a mount system, which was called either a K-mount or Canon's E-mount or whatever you had, Sony's new E-mount. Any system like that has a bayonet which clicks in and goes into place in one step. That allows you to have things like automatic apertures, autofocus and light metering, all that sort of stuff. So as this lens is a screw mount lens, how do I fit this lens to my Pentax camera? The simple answer is luckily my dad bought many years ago an adapter. That's this little thing here. This allows you to screw the lens into this and then this goes into the clip mount, the bayonet mount. And then that then fits into the camera. It's very, very simple to put it on. It's not as simple to take it off though. The best way of doing it when you're putting it on is to actually screw the adapter onto the lens first. So it goes onto the screw mount on the lens first and then with the adapter on it, you then put it into the camera, which is quite straightforward. The camera's got a little locking button that unlocks the lens normally, so you press it on both cameras, Sony's and the Pentax, and all cameras have a little locking mechanism. This doesn't work like that because it's a screw mount, the screw comes undone before the lock does. So basically you screw the lens of the mount, that leaves behind the adapter, and then you've got to get your finger in or your thumb into the adapter. There's like a little clippy bit that you push it in with your thumb, so it comes straight out. And then you can put your normal lens back on again. Now, luckily, all of the prime lenses, as I said, the manual prime lenses, I can use with the Sony as well. And the way I can do that is that I bought an adapter, this thing, that allows me to adapt a Pentax lens to Sony. I've also got one of these for the old Panasonics, but that does allow me to use manual lenses, but fully manual. Everything on it is manual. And that's why I bought this lens. Some people say these are portrait. Um, I sort of a telephoto portrait lens. It's a bit of both but it's a nice length lens. Once it's got the adapter on it, it then fits on the Sony. It's not massive compared to what the Tamron would be. It's not ridiculously enormous. 
um, and it allows me to have a handheld camera still. There is no stabilization on these. Luckily, on the Pentax, the Pentax has got stabilization built into the camera. So I was using it on the Pentax, I can get a little bit of stabilization with it. On the Sony, most of the stabilization is done through the lenses. But then I don't get that with my Sigma fully automatic digital 90mm lens either. It doesn't have stabilization when it's on the Sony. Now, of course, when it's on the Pentax, it doesn't need the adapter. So on the Pentax, it just fits standard onto the camera. And it doesn't really look any bigger. Probably doesn't take up any more room than the standard 18 to 55 kit lens. The thing is that this lens was designed in the 70s. This particular one's probably around about the 1980, 81 mark. Because it's using this adapter, and it's on a more modern camera, this part doesn't really do anything. The only thing you've got to make sure is that the setting is to manual, not automatic. If it's automatic, the aperture blades stay wide open constantly. So on automatic, it's no use, you can't use it. If it's on manual, then it's basically then when you adjust the aperture from 2.8 up to 22, it does do what it's supposed to do and it closes the aperture ring. Now, when I bought it, there was a sticker on it saying that it was slightly sticky, so the aperture doesn't move that fast. It doesn't matter. The aperture blades don't need to. Once you've set them, they stay in place. You're not fiddling around with it. And especially as it's not in the automatic mode, it won't make any difference. So it's in manual, the aperture is down to whatever you want, whether it be 2.8 or 22, and it takes the perfect picture. There's even a built-in lens hood on the front. You pull this little thing out, which is quite useful, quite handy. I didn't think it had one at first. I had to look on the internet quickly to check that. The lens on its own, on if I'm using it on the Pentax, the lens on its own 344 grams. With the adapter to use it on the Sony, it combines up to about 419 grams. Compare that to the Tamron without the adapter. The Tamron lens without the adapter is 549 grams. The nice thing about it being a manual vintage lens is it's construction. It's a metal lens. It's very, very well built, even if it's a cheap company. It's a Russian company called Helios, made in Japan, so it's a Japanese lens, but it's super high quality, even though it's old. So the other reason for buying it, obviously, it was from a charity shop. It was ridiculously cheap. This lens cost me four pounds. Four pounds, English pounds, sterling. That means it was cheaper than some bars of chocolate that I buy. Definitely just cheaper than a can of beer or a lager. And even if I don't use it hardly ever, for four quid, I can afford to throw it away if I really want to. I'm not going to because I've taken some shots with it already. And so far, it looks all right, actually. Now, sometimes they are better off, if you read through forums and you see stuff on the internet, they're better off taking black and white pictures. They get more contrast from a black and white. It means they look a little bit better, a bit sharper. Old lenses do tend to have a little bit of haze to them. Um, this one has a very slight spot in it, which you don't tend to notice. So it's not got fungus. It's not damaged in any way. It's working okay. So I'm hoping to get some nice results out of it. And I can use it on both the Pentax and the Sony to get a similar type of sharpness at a decent portrait length. So I'm very lucky that I got this for four pound. But obviously we need to do some test shots, show you what it does. And as I said, determine whether or not it's useful or not. I think it is going to be very useful. So we'll have a look. So honestly, what do I really think of the images and the quality? Well, actually, I'm really impressed with both. On the Pentax, I think it's a little bit sharper and I've got slightly better results from the Pentax. Plus the Pentax has got built-in image stabilization. So that's on the camera, not on the lens. So that helps a bit, especially with it being sort of a semi-telephoto lens. It's quite a long lens. So image stabilization does help a lot. But even on the Sony, it's, you know, you get a good handheld on it. It's quite nice. The downside to the Sony at the moment is that adapter that I've got, which is huge. I have ordered a much smaller adapter to fit it to the Sony, which is very, very thin, which means it'll be a lot easier and a bit more comfortable to fit on. So I shall try it with that. But as I said, with both cameras, the image quality is really, really good. So I'm quite impressed with it. I can use it on both. I will use it on both the Sony and the Pentax. Or well, I might actually use it more on the Pentax. I don't know yet. 
Now, obviously, the thing with these sort of lenses from charity shops is you've always got to check out to make sure that they are OK. The only thing you really can do is look through them. The thing you ought to be looking for when you're looking through them is dust and fungus. Fungus will show up as big blobs. You don't want any of them at all because that's going to reflect your images badly. And dust, again, depending on how much dust, if there's a lot of dust, it's going to affect your images. If there's small specks, chances are it won't do any effect at all. So just be careful when you buy them. Make sure it's not all sticky and gluey and that things work and move. And you should do all right. And as I said, for four quid for that one, I mean, it's fantastic. I love it. So, yes, I'll be getting out and using that quite a bit this summer, especially when I want that longer length range and maybe some street photography stuff, which I hope to do a lot more of this year. Mm -hmm.